What up, YouTube? For the old man. John. That's right. Welcome back. Old Man Games channel. I am your host, the Old Man Games. This is Starters Orders 7, a horse racing management simulation. As you can see, we are season number nine, day number 152. OMG, that's me, like I said. This is for the old man trails. And we got right here for you, old man trails. 15 horses occupied, 75 slots available in the current stable. We got seven point, just under 7.8 million in the bank. Check out our breeding operation here. We're sitting on 48 mares. They're currently all in full. So we're gonna have 48 yearlings come next year. Looking good. But what I may do, not may, I'll, excuse me, what I will do, we get to the top of next season I'm gonna cut the fat you know what I'm saying so basically all the mares under 100 it's time to let them go I've decided I was going back and forth at one point I was thinking uh, should I keep them but nah it's time to let them go okay here are our studs we got nine so far we're current I think we bought like three that we're grooming. Three additional that we're grooming here soon. I'm gonna try to get them over 100. One of them is, but just to focus on these that we got on the screen, it might be time to let go of Buena Vista and inform decision at some point, but. Let's see, let's see. Buena Vista has pretty good speed there. Here's his lineage. Nothing too spectacular or even notable. Offspring wise, his offspring hasn't necessarily produced much in terms of money. 20,000. This is Mai Tai's dad. Okay. Mai Tai is his best offspring. She has made 16,000 of the 19,000 that his offspring produced. Now, in fairness to him, most of his offspring are in this yearling batch that we that we got. Sunday Times. That's one where I didn't change the name. That was the name that came with that horse. Pacific Grove. That's another one didn't change the name man Sony and last you know what oh you know what no yeah I didn't change the name on this I sold them I sold this one in that batch of yearlings that we sold that's why I don't recognize the name New World, this is one where I did not change the name. Let's see. Proud Tatiana is the mama for New World, but yeah. And then Kingfisher Blue is another one. Most of his kids I didn't change the name on, and a lot of them I kept at least through this round. You know, I'm gonna keep through the point where they're two year olds to see, so they have a good chance that I will race at least one or two of these. So I'd say Buena Vista is decent, and he's only eight years old, so I'm not gonna part with him anytime soon. Informed decision. He's decent. One thing I like about him is his stamina. So when it comes to my mares that are low on stamina, I can match them up with informed decision. Okay, 
his offspring has made a hundred and just under a hundred and thirty thousand dollars granted he is older so he has offspring as old as five years old on his tippy toes is his best one is that one of mine yep sure is on his tippy toes we sold him for 2.3 million back in 2025 He's gone out and made $33,000 in 14 races. He's won four. He's pretty good. Oops, didn't mean to do that. But yeah, so Informed Award has made some pretty decent offspring. As you can see, we got some pretty good studs, man. And most of them are fertile, as you can see. That's a real young one. That's our best one right there. He's 113. Jim Tango is only eight. Got strategic actions. Five, that's another young one. Double the troubles, 10. And you already know he, his offspring is up to 786,000. I can't tell when these two were born because they are expired, but the oldest living offspring he has is are five years old. So Oh, this is bridal pack well I say it like like it means anything because he's most of their fathers. But that's, yeah. And out of our 15 horses right now, what, Twice as Nice, Bridal Path, Catalina's Flame, Two Ponytails. Autumn Melody is one of them. I believe we still have them, yep. Yep, we still got Autumn Melody. Oh yeah, also too guys, side note, I should have said this earlier in the program, but uh, I have upgraded to a brand new microphone with a brand new microphone stand. It's not even a microphone stand, it's like a, a dang, I don't know what you would call it, it's like one of those podcast things, but my whole little setup has been upgraded here. Let me know down in the comments if you've been following. Um, Give me some feedback on the audio. I'm going to test it too. I hope it's not going to be a wasted episode because it's going to be a full, what, like hour or something. But I'm looking at the meter right now and it looks like it's lighting up as I'm talking. So we're going to keep rolling, y'all. All right. So, yeah, anyway. So, yeah, Double Trouble. This is one of our best stallions in our stable. We got Rebel Do My Keys, another 10 year old. Damn, look at his offspring. They're up to 800,000, 816. That's interesting. His offspring has made more. Rebel Rabbit is his best one. Oh, yeah, Rebel Rabbit is up, almost up to a million. We sold Rebel Rabbit for 2.2 million last year, last January 2027. Excuse me. Oh, damn, Rebel Rabbit, pretty good. Won four out of 13 races. 750, and most of that is this season, 739,000 this season. This is one of our newer stallions. 
Bergrigio, I think is how you pronounce that, but he looks pretty good, man, if you ask me, in terms of like having the speed, the stamina, decent acceleration, good starting. So, you know, we can match him up with damn near any of our mares because all of our mares are really good. You know what I'm saying? Let's see, this is his lineage. So we go back to what maternal grandparents yeah, oh not that and then in terms uh oh wait a minute okay so he he doesn't even have any offspring yet he will after this season I'm, I'm pretty sure we've matched him up a couple times at least once so he may have one of these foals coming up Another new one is all for free. Six year old who has no stamina but incredible speed and acceleration. This guy right here is a sprinter. But imagine though, if we hook him up with a mare that has decent stamina, he can have some dangerous offspring. He too so far has no offspring, but he will after this season. That's all for free. One of our newer stallions. We just bought him for, oh, we just bought him this season. It must've been last episode for two, uh, just under 300,000. Oh wait, my bad, I didn't mean to do that. I want to see when we get this guy. We got him earlier this season in February. For, for Grigio, we got him in February for... 464000 and change. But yeah, man, th that is our stable of studs right there wanted to go through everything before we hopped into the mix here we are in the month of june in the year of 2028 in the game let's check out the sales calendar okay we got another two-year-old sale coming up on the third i don't think we are looking to part ways with any of our two-year-olds we got uh, weekly sale. Okay, we got another breeder sale on the 13th, so we gotta pay attention to that. And then a yearling sale on the 29th, but at this point, I think I'm good with the yearlings that I have in terms of going into next season with them as two year olds. So I don't think I can, I don't think I need to pay attention to any more of these yearling sales. Still gonna pay attention to the two-year-old sales. We're down to wait, how many make sure? One, two, three, four. We're down to five two-year-olds. And actually, I think I can hold on to all of the all of the ones we have. So I don't have to pay attention to that either. So for now, the biggest sale coming up for this month is on the 13th which is the next breeder sale. Our next race is on the 9th. Then we have three horses racing on the 11th. I believe that's the same race for all three of them. Oh yeah, okay, this is the third of the Triple Crown races. On this game, it's the Brooklyn States, but remember the Brooklyn States is uh, what is it called? It's the Kentucky Derby, the Preakness, and then, damn, one more. there's one more. I cannot think of it right now, y'all. I'm going blank. That's my old man. That's the old man for you. Uh, not the, oh, the Belmont Stakes. Okay, that is, that's what I'm thinking of, the Belmont Stakes. So, in this game, the, Bro the Brooklyn Stakes, equals the Belmont Stakes, okay, y'all? So just keep that in mind. And I didn't feel like uh, doing no adjusting because to me, you know, whatever. I can just tell you what it is and you can remember. 
and I'll try to do my best to remember with my old ass. I'm gonna need to type it down somewhere. All right, so that's what it is. Um, so yeah, that's the third of the triple crown races for the season. So that's actually one race, but we got three horses in that one race on the 11th. Then on the 15th, we got a race. On the 26th, let's see if it's the same race. He's in the Colonial Tur Turf Cup. And Prince Charming. Oh no, wait, I'm tripping, huh? That is not the same day. Damn, okay, y'all, see, my bad. My old ass is up here doing this without my glasses on right now. I thought this was the same day. This is actually the 26th, and this is the 28th. So, that's definitely two different races. All right, so those are the races that we got for June. I'm pretty sure we will get through June, and we'll probably get to these two races in July, but we'll see. And actually, before we get going, let's see if there's any horses we need to schedule right now. Oh, yeah, and just for an FYI, I try to take it easy on my two-year-olds, meaning in their two-year-old season, I probably don't want to race them more than five times. So, King Star probably got one more race to go before we shut him down for the season. Autumn Melody is injured. I'm going to keep an eye on this. It's been red for a while. If this red does not turn to that orange, it might be time to put Autumn Melody uh, out for grass, which is this right here, which is basically shutting, shutting her down for the season. But I'm going to keep an eye on this and see if she can come back from this injury. It don't look like she recovering fast enough for me. Okay, Exotic Dreams, what's that, 23? Okay, she might be ready for me to schedule her again. She don't have anything there. She has three races so far. She's getting better, but she has not won one yet, so she's due for another maiden race. Let me schedule her. Oh yeah, that should be a good one. Okay, as we said, Autumn Melody is still injured, or not injured, but she's not at good health, um, not at racing health yet. Yeah, she's not ready yet. All right, so we good to go. I'm about to start simming through. Over to the ninth. What's the mail talking about? We just schedule somebody for a race. Okay, that's Autumn Melody did what we needed her to do, which is go from red to this orange, or I think they call it Auburn, whatever this color is. Okay, boom, race day. We got Fantastic Star racing the day, the three-year-old. She got pretty good stamina. Wonder why we did not put her in the derby. Hmm. Maybe that's just an oversight on my part. That's my bad, but not that she would have done anything. I don't think she would have won it. 
to be honest. But I think I can at least start putting her in one mile races. I don't know if this is an oversight on my part that I always see that her stamina, did her stamina go up since we last? I don't know. But anyway, that's how who we got going today. Fantastic star. Her lineage. This is Jim Tango's daughter along with Morifa. I had to lean in close just to make sure I got it right. Again, I'm doing this episode with no glasses and a brand new microphone and a brand new microphone stand. This is this is one of the okay i'm not even gonna talk about it y'all i'm gonna stay focused i'm gonna stay focused okay here we go so fantastic star three-year-old philly pretty good lineage just in terms of the fact that she has both her maternal and paternal oh i mean maternal and paternal grandparents and one of them was a second class. Oh look, her grandfather's still in the game, getting down. Oh, I'm sorry, I mean her grandmother, my bad. I said grandfather, I meant grandmother still in the game, getting down. 4.2 million her offspring has made. And her best offspring is our father. The eight-year-old style. Oh, he's a beast. He's a monster. And there go his offspring. All right, I'm trying to stay focused, y'all. I'm trying to stay focused. So that's what we got today. Let me check my finances before we hop into the race. We are just under negative 30,000. Just a hair under negative 29 at negative 28,989. So it is what it is, y'all. It is what it is. We still got room. We can still play. We can still gamble a little bit. Urgent request. I think we've seen that one before, but I like that name. Lucky date. That's a good one. And the early leader is number one from number eight, turning left-handed. Number three is last. Number one has the advantage from number four. Dang, I was hoping Fantastic Star can stay in the frame, but she just drifted out. Mm -mm -mm. Number four is making ground. And the leader appears to be traveling well. Appeared in her place. Half a mile left to run. Number one has the advantage from number eight. They have three furlongs left to run. Number one is the leader from number eight. Number nine making ground late on. They're in the final furlong. Number eight is the leader from number nine. Now, how did that happen? How did, crosses the line in first. how did Fantastic Star end that far behind? That's horrible. 
My goodness. That was a disappointment right there, y'all. Oh, okay, that's why we didn't have her in the derby. Because she out here tripping. Raiden stays at 69. I don't know if we got to sell her. Do we have to sell Fantastic Star, y'all? I mean, I just don't understand. I think it might be a combination of the cruising speed and the finish application, but her potential and overall rating is high, so I'm really perplexed by this. Maybe it's because the confidence is still uh, kind of low. I mean, it's under 50%. This is 50 right here. Six, her consistency is maxed out, but she's been consistently bad. So maybe we got to sell her. I just don't know. Oh, I really don't know, y'all. Mm -mm -mm. This one is a head scratcher. This one is a head scratcher. On the surface, she got decent attributes. She got decent attributes, but she's just not, she's just not performing. I don't know, I don't know what it is. Okay, there's a sell today, but we're not interested in any of those. We shall proceed and continue. On to the 11th. Okay, this is again Brooklyn Stakes, aka the Belmont Stakes, the third of the Triple Crown races. We got three horses in this race. Y'all know who they are. Let's go. like quite a few of the races who I'm mean, quite, quite a few of the horses that were in the first two races have dropped out by the time we got to this one I think we might have a good chance then with that being the case actually when I think about it
And the early leader is number four from number nine. Number four has the advantage from number seven. Number six is making ground. Number eight is last. Turning left-handed. Number four has the advantage from number six. Oh, oh, damn. Number eight just so happens to be bridal path. It's not good. Number four has a good advantage from number nine. Number eight is last. Number eight is making ground. The favorite appears to be traveling well. Number four has a good advantage from number nine. Turning left-handed. Half a mile left to run. Number four has a good advantage from number nine, number six, and number seven. Number five making ground late on. They have three furlongs left to run. Number four has a good advantage from number nine. Number six staying on. Number three making ground late on. A quarter of a mile to run. Number four has a good advantage from number nine. They're in the final furlong. Number four is the clear leader from number three and number nine. I can't. That's so frustrating. The favorite takes it. Basically, all three of all three just faded like a damn Michael Jordan fadeaway. All three of them. Look at that. He finished seven, eight, nine out of nine horses total. That is ridiculous. I'm disappointed in my three-year-olds, y'all. This three-year-old batch is disappointing. Maybe they some late bloomers. I don't know. I don't know. I ain't even gonna read all that. I'm gonna leave it up on the screen for y'all can read it if you want to, but I ain't even gonna read it. We just gonna keep pushing. All right, we just had one race today with the three horses in it, so we can keep moving on. Let me see, nobody else I need to schedule. So we're ready for the next race on the 15th. Now remember, we got a big sale coming up tomorrow on the 13th, the breeder sale. Let's see if we can pick anything up here. Ooh, whoa, okay, might be three. This 99 is a possible four. Yep, Miss Money Penny only has two offspring so far. She's definitely a possible. But these three right here, oh yeah, we gotta get these three. April Bell. Wait, how does they ever vote Ten, A 10 year old. Fen, Fen, Fensa. I guess I'm another 10 year old. And then Polar Lady, a 12 year old. So they're older. But that's okay. I think they still got some mileage left. Is it? Uh, 
an eight year old, but she's just a 90 and I'm about to get rid of all of our 90s and below, so we don't really need her. Double check Miss Money Penny again. You know what? I think I might pass on Miss Money Penny. Even though she's a 99. She hasn't really won anything. I mean, 3 out of 11 races. But she hasn't won much money. Only 34,000. I don't know. Let me see. I guess it depends. How much is she? 147,000. Eh, might as well. Damn, April Bell, 2.3 million still at 10 years old. But we got the money, so we're gonna get her. 2.3 million. That means she might end up going for like 3 or 4 million. But I'm still getting her. Okay, 2.7 is not that bad. I thought it would have been over 3, so that's pretty good. We'll take it. See, we just let them duke it out. And then we swoop in for the kill, you know, that's the strategy here. Super simple, you know, we keep it simple. It's the kiss strategy. All right, so boom, we added four solid very very solid mares to our collection so if we can get them in full now She never quite really reached her full potential, but she looked good in all the other areas. Her finished application is not really there. But that's okay, we'll see. We'll see what our offspring can do. Did not mean to do that. All right, Miss Money Penny. I'm gonna set her up with. Oh, I think this might be a good mix right here. All for free, cause Miss Money Penny got good stamina. And here's all for free with that really good speed. Yeah, let me hook these two up and see what, what can happen. Thank you. 
Okay, then we got Polar Lady. She just don't really have no speed. That's her issue. You know what? I might have a brain of this stuff. Cause Buena Vista got the speed she need, you feel me? Gotta hook her up with double trouble. That's what I was saving them for. Alright. Our cash is now down to 3.6 million. Okay, we got the four-year-old super gift, the four-year-old Philly super gift running today. I would consider her a sprinter. And this is a seven furlong race. It's probably just a tad bit too long. She's probably like a... Mm, I would say her sweet spot might be six furlongs, but we'll see if she can get it. We'll see how she does in this one. She did pretty good in her last two. As you can see, she went down and she's been on an upward trend ever since. So, was, oop, zoop, zoop. She coming back. Let's see if she can keep going in the right direction. Oh, real quick. Let's see who, what her lineage look like. Double the trouble and Taco Riri. Oh damn! I should have checked my finances, especially after that last race, which was abysmal. I put a lot of money on it too. Ooh, super gift. Come on, y'all had to get really like jiggy with it because, you know, we gotta make some of that money back. And hopefully Super Gift can come through for us right here. That would be nice if it can happen. <laughs> I'm a start. Is that I'm a start? What the hell? Oh, they they funny. All right, let's go. Let's go. We need this bad, man. From a gambling perspective, that is. And they're off. What in the hell? I 
I like how she she stumbled and out the gate. And the early leader is number five from number three. But look at that recovery though. Look at that recovery on Super Gift. I really number like that. Number five is the leader from number seven. I ain't worried about your leader. I like Super Gift recovery. That's number very Number six is last. Come on, Super. Come on, Super. Number three is making ground. Okay, now it's gonna get serious. Half a mile left to run. Number five is the clear leader from number seven. Turning left-handed. Number don't seven fade. appears to be don't traveling fade. well. No, come number on, Number five Super is the Gift. leader from number three. Don't number five fade. is the narrow leader from number five. Number three wins. Damn it. Picked up 3,800, but I lost some money on that. I lost a lot of money on that. Super gift on the season is up to 14,000, just to over 14,000. 27,000 in her career. if I agree with that assessment. She actually went up by one after that race, but I thought that was a horrible performance if you ask me. Felt like she could have did better than that. Okay, we got a two-year-old exotic dream racing today. Stat-wise, uh, she don't look that good. Although she does have perfect finish application. She has surface adaptability, that's good. her lineage it comes from a pretty decent lineage though Let's see what she can do she has no stamina so I'm racing her as a sprinter but you never know if I'm not mistaken some of our previous episodes and previous seasons we saw some of these two-year-olds develop stamina over the season going into their three-year-old season. So let's see how it is. Damn, I keep forgetting to look at finances. Skip right to it, y'all. Let's do it. And they're off. And the early leader is number one from number four. Damn, what was she doing with her neck right there? Turning left handed. Number one's the narrow leader from number four. The number leader four has the advantage from number one. The favorite is making ground. A quarter of a mile to run. Number four is the clear leader from number five. Number four is the clear leader from number six. Number four wins. I'm not mad at that. That was a pretty decent run. I mean, we didn't win, but I really like her. 
That's that's what that's the finish application. Remember I was talking about that she got that finish application? She don't got much for speed, but she definitely got that finish application for sure. Picked up 2,500. See that finish application right there? And that surface adaptability. I would say that's, this is fairly low deterioration potential. Damn, she got a low cruising burst. But a pretty decent extra speed rating. I don't know. Hopefully she improves over time speed wise. But that's a pretty decent finish though for her. She's at 9,000 now for her rookie season. That's not bad. Yeah, I agree with that assessment. I believe that was our only race for the day. No, not interested. Okay, we got the race on the 26th and then the 28th. Not interested in none of those. Oh, finances. Damn, y'all. Abysmal. We down to negative 70,000 now. We almost at our limit. sure about this if I'm gonna have become race back-to-back -back races in the same month like that
Okay, we got Ronaldo Desmates, Demates, however you pronounce it. Again, this is the four-year-old. We picked him up last year as a three-year-old for just over a million dollars. The thought process behind that was we wanted to pick him up from where he was at that point and take him to a higher level, which we've done for sure. Let's see, we got him in April 27. April 8th of 27. Which at that point he was at 106, rated 106. Now he's up to 123. And he's a second class horse. When we got him, he did not have any class. So that's pretty darn good if you ask me. Pretty darn good. For this season so far, he's up to 327,000 in earnings in just three races. He's won one of those three in his career. He's four out of 16 total races for $577,000. Let's see where we are with the finances. Negative 70,000. Let's go. Let's go, let's go. Miss Holly Golightly? That sounds like a very naughty name. It's the best I could say for YouTube. Speaking of names, y'all, hey, I've been saying it. I'm gonna keep saying it every episode until y'all start hitting me with it. And I know <clears throat> these are recorded late with a delay, but hit me with some names in the comments. Drop it down below. Hook a brother up. I've been asking for names all series. Not one person has dropped me a name. I might have to do like a, a, a some kind of giveaway or something like the first commenter to drop a name. Let me see how this goes. If somebody has not commented a name by the time this episode airs. All right, let's go. And they're off. And the early leader is number two from number nine, turning left-handed. Number eight has a good advantage from number nine. Number seven is making ground. Turning left-handed. The leader appears to be traveling well. Number seven is last. Half a mile left to run. Number eight has a good advantage from number nine. They have three furlongs left to run. Number eight is the leader from number two. Number nine staying on. Number eight has a good advantage from number nine. And that's close. Leave that one to the judge. Damn, that was a hell of a finish right there. Holy cow. What the hell happened just now?
Oh, I didn't even get top three. That's cold. Shy Glance was leading the whole time and finished third. Dash and Blade and Rosalind came out of nowhere. I better have gotten fourth. Okay. Damn, that was for $62,000. Holy cow, this is a big race. I put the season total at 390000 He's going to make a good stud. Watch. Mark my words. Watch what I tell you, y'all. He's still rated at 123. He's going to be an incredible stud. He got one more race for this season. No, that's next season. I'm tripping. I'm tripping. I'm tripping. I may actually have him race that and then retire and stud him. Yeah, it was a good trip. Not interested. Here we got a race on the 28th. Looks like the sales calendar. Okay, we got another yearling sale on the 29th. Weakling sells, another two year old sell on July the 17th, and then another breeder sell on July 24th. So that's the one we want to really keep an eye on. It's the 28th, time for Prince Charming, three year old sprinter. Son of Rebel Do My Keys and Chiming Tina. Sounds like a working woman's name. Chiming Tina. Alright, let's just get to it. Freeze up and wills up, okay. And they're off. Prince Charming was out that gate. And the early leader is number nine from number eight, number four, and number one. Number six is last. Number nine has the advantage from number eight. Turning left-handed. They have three furlongs left to run. Number nine just leads from number four and number one. Number seven making ground late on. Number six, the leader, powers God home. Damn. Number four wins. Still walked away with $774, but still felt like that was a horrible performance. 
The three-year-old Colt Prince Charming has made $4,000 on the season, $12,000 in his career. Oh, wait, hold up. He went up two points to 93. That's an all-time high for him. His previous high rating was 92, so I guess that's something. My bad, I didn't even, my eyes just glossed way over that and I clicked. Early entry email for BCOM. We are now at $660,000 on the season and earnings. One point three million career wide. We're pretty much done with June, y'all. Still got time on the clock. I might run through some some of these July races. Got a yearling sale right now, but I'm not parting with any of these yearlings. That'll be cutting myself off from the money we got coming for next year All right we got the two-year-old two ponytails racing today she's actually coming off of a win she just won her first maiden race now this is a great three race. See how she can do here. Hold up, check the finances. 12,000 away from being shut down. I might even extend my little budget here because I don't want to stop spending. I might just say, screw it, let's double it. We got the money for it. They all got whack names. Two ponytails probably got the best names. And they're off. Number seven missed the break. And the early leader is number three from number six. Half a mile left to run. Number three has the advantage from number two, number six, and number eight. Number two staying on. Number four making late progress. Damn, what the hell happened with They're two in the final right here. Number three is the leader from number two. Number three wins. That was horrible. She must have got injured. This is on the 7th of July. Let's get there. Mm. 
Red Dagger. This is one of the four-year-olds that we purchased earlier this year in the month of April. Found it for pretty cheap too, 173,000. And it's the same game plan with this one where our plan is to basically get them up to a higher level. So far we, we have done that. Got him up to 100. All right, so let's go. Wait, real quick. Let me see what his lineage looks like. Nothing too spectacular. Copped a lot. <laughs> I wonder if that's one of mine. And the early leader is number five from number four and number one. Turning left-handed. Number five just leads from number four and number one. Number six is last. Number five is the narrow leader from number four. The favorite goes well. Number two is making ground. Turning left-handed. Number six is last. Half a mile left to run. Number five has the advantage from number four. Number six making late progress. Number seven making ground late on. The favorite staying on. They're in the final oh, hurdle. Oh, number oh, four oh. has the advantage from number five. Number four crosses the line in first. Another horrible performance, man. This middle part of the season right here is kicking our tail. Granted, this isn't a horse that we bred, but still, we're training them. He maintained his 100 rating. But we got to get better than that. Yeah, I saw that. All right, July 8th, we got Mai Tai coming up again. The two-year-old for her fourth race. This is a grade three race. She got two more races after this, too. A great, and two grade two races after this. See what Mai Tai can do. There's also a sale today. Not in, uh, it's 
four year old coat I don't think so I think I'll just stick with what we got he's decent though but I'll just stick with what we got Distance is a decent name. Teenage Idol. Eh. That's about it. My tie was at that gate. And the early leader is number 10 from number 7. Number 2 is last. Number 10 is the leader from number 7. Half a mile left to run. Number 10 has the advantage from number 7. Number 9 staying on. Number 8 making ground late on. Come on, my time. Number 10 has a good advantage. Come on, my time. Number 9, number 10 has a clear advantage. Ooh, from come number on, eight. my time. Come on, my time. No! Why don't you finish? Oh, my God. No. She could not. Fi oh, we got one. Right. Ooh, no. My time won it. My time won it. Let's go. That's what I'm talking about, baby. Let's go. My tie pulled it off. Wow, that was huge. That was a $120,000 race right there, y'all. She's now a class three horse. Look at that. Boom. She earned her badge, baby. Up to 101 rating for the two year old. Let's go. Great job, my tie. She's up to $136,000 on her rookie season. Pretty damn good. You know we're going to be breeding with her. She just earned her spot in our breeding barn. Breeding as a stalker, this horse is a machine. Trip was ideal, I agree. Dang, my tie did that job. My tie did that. Okay, we got a breeder sale on July 24th. We got a race on the 16th and then the 27th. So let's try to get there. Oh yeah, and then we just put my tie right back in another race. I think I can pull it out this race. Damn. Damn it.
All right, we got Fred Bojangles racing today. This is, again is another horse that we purchased. Bought him this season in April for a hair over three hundred thousand. And he's up now to a 95 rating. So let's see what he can do on this day. Wait, I don't know what the hell happened. Somehow our profit loss here is at negative 75,000. Oh, okay, because of that race we won with my tie. That's right, I'm tripping. That sure is right. I think that's the winnings right there from that my tie race. All right, let's see what Fred Bojangles can do. Check out his lineage. He has a pretty good lineage. We just need him to execute. I think we've seen Freeze Up before this season. I remember seeing that name. And they're off. Number four missed the break. And the early leader is number one from number six. Number four is last. Half a mile left to run. Number six just leads from number one turning left-handed. Number one goes well. Number seven staying on late on. They're in the final furlong. Number six is the leader from number seven, number two, and number four. Number seven wins. Couldn't quite recover. It's a valiant effort, but he couldn't quite recover. Won sixteen hundred dollars. Puts him at 26 and a half on the season. 39,000 on his career. His rating dropped by one to 94. Yeah, yeah. On the season, we are now up to $782,000 in earnings. King Star is up next.
Fantastic star in this allowance race to see what she can do. She's the one that's seemingly reco recovering from something. I have no clue what it is. But we got to get her back on track.
Okay, I think I got everybody scheduled that I need to get scheduled. Go ahead and try to get to that race right there on the 27th so we can close out July for this episode. two-year-old king star running today it's a grade two race he's already a third class horse let's get it in We saw dance tempo before. Definitely saw supreme sound before. Frozen pipe sounds like either a point star name or crackhead. And the early leader is number nine from number three and number seven. Number nine just leads from number three. Half a mile left to run. Number nine has the advantage from number three and number 11. Number 10 staying on late on. Mm. Number one staying on. Number two staying on. I think. Number five is the fractional leader from number four. I think I'm overrunning our horses. Takes the win. That's the only thing I can think of is that I'm overrunning them. King Star have been doing really well this season. Two first place finishes. Only to now finish 11th. That's odd. No, I guess I guess not. I guess not because it's a higher grade of competition when you look at it. But damn. Oh, he said it was written us closer. Ah, that's what it was. He was injured. Okay. I'm not happy he's injured, but that makes sense now. And it is, like I said, though, the over racing. Oh no, damn, we got another race on the 31st. I didn't see that. Super gifts.
I've seen, I think we've seen Sing Alana sing before. But that might be about it. And they're off. And the early leader is number three from number seven. Number four is leaving it late. Number seven is the leader from number three. Half a mile left to run. Number seven is the leader from number three. The favorite making ground late on. A quarter of a mile to run. Number seven is the clear leader from number three. Number seven is the clear leader from number eight, number six, and number nine. Number eight takes it. Yeah, these races are much more competitive. It's a great two race right here. Finished second to last, but technically that's last because that last horse right there got injured. Super gift on the season is at 14,000. Career, 27,500. And that'll be that. y'all uh, we're at march 1st and this is about a good point in time to go ahead and shut things down yep that about right we'll come back on the next episode with this fantastic star race and see what it do from that point but until then you already know who it is for the old man Time. That's right, y'all. We will see you on the next one. Thank you for sticking around, hanging out with us this long. Drop a comment down below. Hit that like. Hit that subscribe button. And we will see you on the next one. Peace.